Okay, we're going to review now the palpitations of the wrist bones. Let's first start with the trapezium. The easiest way to find the trapezium is to take the thumb, slide down the first metacarpal, and when you get to the divot, you have reached the trapezium. So you slide down the first metacarpal, it drops off, and there's your trapezium. Now your trapezoid is housed between the trapezium and the capitate. Let's find the capitate. To find the capitate, you slide down your third metacarpal till the divot. That's where your capitate is, so you know your, trapezi uh, your trapezoid is going to be snuggled right between your trapezium, which was at the base of the first metacarpal, and your capitate, which is at the divot off of the capitate. So your trapezoid is snuggled right around here. That's trapezoid. It doesn't usually get into a whole lot of trouble anyhow because it is so safe between these other two bones. Now to find the hamate, the easiest way to find the hamate is to find it by locating the hook. And the nicest way and easiest way to find the hook of the hamate is to palp palpitate in the hypothenar region. Once you find it, you can palpate the bone in the hook and the patient is usually quite tender in that area and will sometimes not be able to tolerate too much pressure. But you can find the hook on Nancy easily right here in the hypothenar eminence. To find the lunate, which we know if you slide down the capitate, the lunate's going to be just a little bit more proximal, but to get it to pop up, we can pop up the lunate easily on Nancy, and here's the lunate. So you were sliding down, the capitate is at your divot, and then the lunate is your next bone. And you can even see that it pops up to some degree. You might be able to see it a little bit on a side view too. Here it is, that lunate prominence. So it becomes a little bit of a prominence when you have wrist flexion. So it's a little easier to find, and when you're first learning to find it, you can find that lunate, set the wrist down, and then you know landmark-wise that you're on the lunate in this area. When we're looking for the scaphoid, the easiest way is to find the tubercle, which is volar. So we'll find the, the tubercle, the scaphoid, palpate around in the thenar eminence, and once you find the scaphoid tubercle, you'll feel it's a little bit of a tender spot on the person, and you've achieved finding the tubercle. To find the rest of the scaphoid, you simply go to the person's snuff box, lift your thumb up, resist. Here is the snuff box, and inside the snuff box lies the scaphoid. So you found it. You can actually grab the scaphoid, dorsal and volar together. And I've got this scaphoid and I'm mobilizing it back and forth between my fingers. I can actually move the scaphoid between my fingers. So that's the best way to find the scaphoid. You can find it either dorsally in the snuff box or volarly by finding the tubercle of the scaphoid. Now, the pisiform is easy to find because it's very prominent. Slide down, you'll find your pisiform easily. It's the only carpal bone with a tendon insertion from the forearm, and it is quite easy to find because it's so superficial. Now your triquetrum sometimes is a little bit tricky to find, and the best way to find the triquetrum is to palpate on the ulnar side of the hand, and if you have the person deviate, it actually will pop out with deviation. right here, under my thumb. When I go into deviation, radial deviation, it pops right out under my thumb. Ulnar deviation, it sinks back in. Radial deviation, it pops right out. And that is how you can find the tricretrum.